Welcome, dizzy mortals, to the spacewalk at Windy Acres. Allow me to introduce the madman, Eric Roberts, who built this crazy contraption. Hello, and thank you, Phil, for that unnecessary introduction. Unnecessary, you say? But you need a proper introduction. All right, but Madman, really? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Haven't you been to your house lately? Fair enough. You got me there. Wait, why aren't you moving anymore? <sighs> well, obviously, you were too damn lazy to animate me for this video. Whatever, Phil. Moving on. Today, I'd like to talk about my rotating tunnel. But wait, I haven't finished giving your introduction. <sighs> Often referred to as the spacewalk by those who have traveled through it, I'd like to show you a brief behind the scenes look of how this tunnel came to be and how it almost didn't happen. I'll have a loop of the completed tunnel footage at the end of this video. I found a wonderful web page that detailed the construction of a rotating tunnel, scaryterry.com. I'll include a link in the description. The first phase of the project was to build the tunnel structure. Then came the task to make the tunnel rotate. Following Terry's example, I used bicycle rims to support the whole thing. A single motor is all that's needed to power the rotation. I deviated from his design here by welding a second rim onto the weight-bearing rim as not to damage the drive belt. Scott and I built a bridge out of wood. We also had to extend the legs of the tent that we were planning to put this in. That's us welding extensions onto the legs now. In an attempt to keep the tunnel secret from the neighborhood until Halloween night, we built and enclosed the tent first, then the bridge, and then finally the tunnel. We had a simpler painted interior design back then. So it's the weekend before Halloween, all is ready to go. We simply need to apply power for the magic to happen. Hurricane Sandy is slated to make landfall on October 29th, about 80 miles south of the haunt's location. I scurry down to my house to disassemble and store the tunnel structure before the storm reaches it. As you can see, the tent barely survived. The tunnel would have been destroyed. October 30th, Cliff and I repair the damage and reassemble and test the tunnel. This takes us until 4 a.m. Halloween morning. I am super grateful to have awesome friends. Thank you. So after a few years of assembly, disassembly, and nail-biting weather threats, we did what any normal person would do. Take out a second mortgage and build a second garage, of course. Along with the new home, we gave the tunnel a new steel bridge. Thank you, Mark, for helping source the material as well as delivering it to my driveway. Again, I am lucky to have such awesome friends. This new bridge project really put my welding skills to the test. With the new bridge in place, it's time to assemble the tunnel. Hopefully for the last time. I need to thank Justin for spending several days in a humid and hot garage helping paint these awesome space-themed panels. All from a handful of spray cans and YouTube videos. As you can see here, our attempts to film this tunnel in blacklight conditions were never successful. We finally figured out that the best way to film in UV light was to take a half second exposure still image, rotate the tunnel one inch, and then repeat 375 times. 
Then by stitching the pictures together, we have the video. So with a little patience and a lot of time, I'm happy to share with you what it actually looks like in person. In the past few years, we have assembled a custom soundtrack for the tunnel, some of which is heard throughout this video. I'd like to thank my bear Jay for performing and recording it all.